In tonight's Top Gear, we look at rallying. Following a spate of tragic deaths over the past 12 months, the sports governing body has acted at last to reduce the dangers. The new rules seem set to change radically the entire face of the sport. But we start tonight with the sport of rallying, which is in some disarray. The past 12 months has been a bad time for rallying. The driver, Bottega, was killed on last year's Corsican rally. Ari Vartanen had a terrible crash in Argentina, from which he may never fully recover. Spectators were killed in Portugal, and more recently, as we reported, Henry Teuvenen and his co-driver, Sergio Cresto, were burned to death on this year's Corsican rally. These accidents have shocked many thousands of people, both inside and outside the sport. But it's not being too hard on the sport to say that they were predicted, because for many months now, drivers and team managers and so on have been saying, how long? How long can these supercars go on charging through the forest at high speed and round the rocks before people start getting killed? Now, at last, FISA, the sports governing body, have taken a grip on things. Some say they should have done it two years ago. Others, that now they have acted, they've done so too hastily. Either way, the changes they have imposed will alter the face of rallying almost out of all recognition. The immediate changes they propose are as follows. The halting of all new versions of existing Group B cars, which have been called Formula One cars in disguise, and Group A cars, which are really super production vehicles. They're going to ban aerodynamic skirts, which aid traction, which can increase speeds. And there's a move to replace the lightweight glass fibre and Kevlar panels because they can burn. Special stages on rallies will be limited now to a total of 600 kilometres, or about 360 miles, in an attempt to reduce driver fatigue. And as well as the compulsory fire extinguishers, there now have to be automatic systems to protect both engine and crew compartments in all Group B cars. And then on the 1st of January next year, they're going to consolidate the whole thing. They're going, for example, to scrap the special Group Rally cars, the Group S, and that must come as immense relief to most drivers because these monsters, with potentially up to 800 brake horsepower, were even more high-speed turbocharged accidents waiting for somewhere to happen. They're going to extend the ban on lightweight but inflammable Kevlars and glass fibres to all cars. They're going to ban, and this must really be the most controversial change, they're going to ban all but a handful of the powerful Group B supercars and create a whole new World Rally Championship around the Group A touring cars. Now, it's this that stirred up a real hornet's nest among the manufacturers. No one would argue that, like most motorsports, rallying can be dangerous. Indeed, it's a vital part of the sport's attraction. But it's been felt for a long time that things have gone too far. Cars were getting lighter and lighter and yet more and more powerful. In the words of the Lancia boss, Cesare Fiorio, we've lost the balance between the car, the driver, and the road. So there's a general feeling that action was needed. However, the controversy centers around both what FIS have done and the speed and the scope of the changes they've announced. Under the rules, the manufacturers will be given around two years to introduce reforms of this kind. This time, they'll be given 24 hours notice. So what has been their response? Audi, for example, have announced that they're withdrawn from the rest of this year's World Championship and won't be back in 1987 unless major improvements are made for the safety of both competitors and spectators. But they would be a tremendous loss to the sport. Peugeot are hopping mad about the new regulations, and with some reason. The 205 has become a runaway winner both last year and again this year, and the spin-off in terms of Peugeot 205 GTI sales has been immense. But the 205 is a Group B supercar, so they're said to be considering suing FISA for ignoring the rule over giving two years' notice of fundamental changes. Lancia are in almost the worst position of all. They've just spent hundreds of thousands of pounds developing the really high-class Delta S Fords. But they've had two drivers and a co-driver killed in the space of a year. And they're more receptive to the new plans. But they're still confident of some participation in Group A next year. But with what remains to be seen. Ford aren't exactly happy, but they seem to be the best placed of all the manufacturers. They can slot straight into Group A with the Sierra 4x4 and the new RS Cosworth, once they've made the statutory 5,000 models of the Cosworth to qualify. And, as a sort of consolation, they can sell off the RS 200s as upmarket sports cars because they are approved for use on the road. Poor Austin Rover can't even do that, because having spent millions of pounds developing the new Metro 6R4, they find themselves left with 140 unsold cars and with no regulations under which they can either race them or sell them because they're not road approved. The old car seller's maxim, never raced or rallied, now takes on a bit of twist for Austin Rover. 
So how do they feel about the new FISA proposals? There are two issues here. One is the issue of spectator safety, which I don't think is dependent upon the car, and I think FISA agree with us on that. And there is the safety of the crew, which is very much a manufacturer responsibility. And I think that uh, what FISA need to do is to restrict the power of the cars so they're easier to drive, um, but give us a chance to actually use the cars that we have. But they are restricting the power of the cars, aren't they? Well, no, they're forbidding us to use the cars that they have induced us to build. But our, our fees are not saying that because these cars are dangerous weapons, they are uh, too fast, too powerful, too difficult to control. Because of that, they have to be, as it were, banned from the sport. But the danger lies in the particular regulations, not in the type of the car. What is Austin Rover going to do? I mean, what, what are you going to do with that car park of... 140-odd 6R4s you've got at the back here. Well, we hope to sell them, obviously. And I hope that, uh, first of all, that FISA will re change its mind over allowing Group B cars to rally. Um, I hope that they will take the manufacturer's advice and put certain restrictions upon them so that we can all feel quite safe in terms of crew safety. And I hope that uh, we shall continue to rally. And what are the rallies themselves? The proposed changes are presenting enormous headaches to organisers all around the world, not least to the manager of our own Lombard RAC rally. Well, the, the main specific effect that we will see coming from this proposal is a reduction in special stage mileage. Now, in 1985, we ran 520 stage miles. This year, we were planning to run 420 stage miles. We had reduced the overall length of the rally considerably. FISA have now said that the World Championship rallies must have a maximum mileage of 375 stage miles. So, fortunately, we can make small changes which will pull our route back into line without massive disruption of the plan. Will we lose a lot of stages? Uh, we're going to lose approximately 50 stage miles, so we're going to lose five or six stages. And the effect of all those changes is quite dramatic. It will knock out many of the famous Welsh stages that normally occupy the last night and day of the rally. Stages that have given the Lombard RAC its reputation for having a very tough finish. What's more, it will reduce the rally from five days to four. Good news for the drivers, a real loss for the spectators. To be fair, Malcolm, last year when we interviewed a lot of the drivers before the rally started, um, many of them, even some of the most experienced, like Henry Mickler and so on, said, enough is enough. This rally is too tough for these kinds of, of supercars. Yes, I, I would disagree with that uh, in part. There were one or two Scandinavian drivers, the Finns in particular, who complained that Lombard RAC rally last year was too tough. After the rally, they changed their tune. They said it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. Um, we accept the point that driving these Group B cars requires a high degree of physical fitness and a high degree of concentration. And yes, rally should be shortened. We had taken that into account in this year's planning. But I, I do believe that uh, too much was made of this last year. I mean, the one very good thing that I think the majority of people in the sport do believe has come from all this is that the World Championship next year will be for Group A cars. And these bear much more relationship to the standard road-going production vehicle that we see on the roads today. At the end of the day, what spectators want to see is keen competition, not crashes. And keen competition can take place in cars which have much less power and are much closer to the production cars that we all drive. But there is one glaring omission in the new rules, that of crowd control. Everyone in the sport, particularly the drivers, feels that spectator safety must be improved if we're not going to get more accidents and more people killed. And frankly, if the time is right to make the cars safer to drive, then it's equally right for FISA to shoulder the responsibility of making the sport safer to watch.